Hello, I'm Jim Richardson. I want to welcome you to this special broadcast on the National Day of Prayer. You know, I, I could not let this day go by without sharing some things that I feel like are just so incredibly important because I believe that we can change our nation. I do not believe it's too late. And I'll tell you what else. I do not believe that the fate of our nation lies in the hands of our politicians. I do not believe that the fate of our nation lies at the whims of gangs and and uh, uh, corrupt people. I believe that the fate of our nation lies in the hearts of the believers and that when believers pray prayers based on the new covenant finished work of Jesus, we can bring about incredible transformation in our cities and, our, and in our nation. You know, first of all, I want to say that, that I am incredibly thankful that we are in a nation that still gives us the right to pray. Thank God we don't have to hide to pray. There would be many nations of the world that would, that would literally have to hide if they wanted to pray together and could be persecuted for it. So thank God we are still at a place where we have the freedom to pray. Now today, millions of people across America are going to pray, and many, many organizations are going to pray for 24 hours. But here's a real question we've got to ask, and nobody wants to ask this question, but you see, I want to talk about how we can pray and, and make a difference. I want to talk about how we can pray and get the results that we're really going for. Because the question is this. After we pray today, are we really going to see any results? What will the differences be uh, after this national day of prayer? And I'm not saying that to be critical, but I'm saying that many times believers pray and in fact nothing happens. And then when nothing happens, we have to in turn start creating uh, a new theological concepts to explain away while nothing's happening. And I want to tell you something. We can make things happen. We have the authority of man. We have the authority of a believer. Uh, we are the righteousness of God in Christ. We have been given the promises of God, and we can make things happen that will change this nation and that will change the world. Now, today, the battle cry for this day of prayer is going to come from Second Chronicles 7.14. And it says this, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Heal their land. Now, <clears throat> let me just address a couple of aspects of this that, that we need to consider. You know, first of all, this is an instruction that is addressed to the people who are called by the name of the Lord. In other words, this is not what the sinners need to do. This is what the believers need to do. And I believe that there is a prevailing thought uh, in the church in America that our nation can't change because the sinners won't change. And obviously, sinners need to change. Obviously, people that don't know God need to change. But that change needs to really began with us. It needs to start with us repenting, us changing our mind. Because he says here, if you're called by my name, you've got to humble yourself, which means you've got to give up your opinion. You've got to give up the way you do things, the way you see things. And you've got to pray and seek my face and, and then turn from your wicked ways. Well, the whole idea of praying and seeking God's face is to understand God's wisdom, to understand how we should act, to understand how we should function. Well, let me tell you something. We've got a Bible that tells us how to function. We really, uh, you know, we, we want to hear what God's got to say to us, but we don't need to hear anything new from God in order to bring about incredible transformation uh, in our nation and in our cities. So as believers, it's not just the fact that we need to repent of our sins. We need to repent of our passiveness. We need to repent of our unbelief. You know, we need to repent of our vain dependence and hope in government. You know, there, there are believers today that limit their faith to the condition of the government. Every year since I've been a believer, I've been a believer for almost 40 years, and, and every time there's a president, presidential election and the, and, and the wrong guy gets into office, the church acts as if the end is at hand. As if God is not bigger than the government. I got news for you. God's bigger than the government. And if we will trust God, if we will respond to God, if we'll humble ourselves and give up our way of doing things, 
then I got news for you. We can change, we can change this nation. And I, I want you to understand something. We will never change this nation because we get involved enough in politics. Now, I believe in being uh, Christians in politics. I tell you, it was people that had value. Some of them were Christians. Some of them weren't Christians, but at least they had godly values uh, that established our nations and established, established uh, uh, you know, our Constitution. And I understand that it takes people of values to govern, to govern a nation. But I also realize that there is no amount of force and there's no amount of pressure that we can bring on unrighteous people to ever get them to govern righteously. In other words, what's got to happen ultimately in America will not happen externally through the political system. It will happen internally as people are established in the right values. And so probably the very first thing that we need to repent over is the fact that we haven't we haven't really pursued winning our nation to Jesus. We've, we've tried to legislate our nation into righteousness and rules uh, never, never work. They never change a person's heart. But back to this thing about seeking God's face and praying. There's a larger question that we've got to ask about this whole concept of, 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 of the National Day of Prayer and seeking God's face. And number one is, can God really answer a prayer if it is totally based on this scripture, if it's totally based on the fact that we're going to humble ourselves, we're going to pray and seek his face, we're going to turn from our wicked ways, uh, and, then, and then, you know, God's going to hear us and, and forgive our sins and heal our land. Now, what I'm about to say it, it could, could be a little shocking because, you see, every Old Testament reality has to be interpreted and understood in light of the finished work of Jesus. We can't just pull scriptures out of the Old Testament and put the conditions on those scriptures uh, that were given in the context. In other words, uh, uh, in other words, in the Old Testament, Jesus' work had not been finished. In the Old Testament, righteousness had not been given. In the Old Testament, man had not been redeemed from the curse of the law. And so there were terms and conditions that were given under the Old Covenant that under the New Covenant are totally different. And if we seek to apply this scripture in the strictest sense, then we're violating and ignoring the new covenant. You see, if we're asking God to heal our country totally based on our performance, that we humble ourselves enough, that we repent enough, and that we do enough right things, then this ignores the sacrifice of Jesus. It appeals to God on the basis of dead works. And basically we're saying, if we do enough good things, will you respond to us? And I believe in living godly. I believe in living right. But I'm going to tell you something. I do not believe that God hears me because of uh, how good or bad I've lived my life in the past week. God hears me and responds to me because I am in Jesus, because I believe in the finished work of Jesus. And that's what it means to pray in the name of Jesus. It means that we are approaching God on the basis of all that name stands for and all that name involves based on his death, burial, and resurrection. I want to talk to you about New Testament intercession for a few minutes. You see, most of our most of our models for prayer and intercession are based on the Old Covenant. We look at the way that people prayed in the Old Covenant, and we think that's the way that we should pray in the New Covenant. And again, we totally ignore the finished work of Jesus. Uh, and in fact, the book of Hebrews says that we insult the Spirit of grace and that basically we, we tread underfoot the Son of God. And, and we count the blood of this covenant as nothing whenever we approach God on any basis of the Old Testament. So I don't think that we want to be praying for our nation in a way that says, God, I'm ignoring the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Uh, I count as a nothing, uh, uh, you know, the Son of God. Uh, I count as nothing the blood of the covenant. And I don't care if the Spirit of grace is involved. 